Hello, welcome once again. Before we get into this video, just take a moment and hit that like button, subscribe, and since that doesn't do much on its own, make sure to hit that bell icon as well. As you may or may not have heard by now, Elon Musk had the opportunity to speak with the CEO of Robinhood, who Musk at one point refers to as Vlad the Stock Impaler. <laughs> But anyway, he was able to ask some tough and entertaining questions. Now, I want you to watch the portion of this interview that I edited down to the informative and funny bits. But afterwards, I highly recommend that you head on over and watch the full video. As always, the link to the full video and the Tesla Dosha's channel will be in the pinned comment and description. Hey, guys. Thanks for, uh, <laughs> thanks for inviting me up. It's good to hang with all of you. All right, Vlad. Was, what really happened? Give us the inside scoop. All right, well, I was actually hoping that uh, you would invite me up for the Fermi paradox part because um, this has been a very surreal weekend and week for me. Um, one of the really great things is all the people coming to uh, coming out of the woodwork to offer support for the company, uh, offer, you know, advice. So um, I got introduced today. Um, and actually, I should say I just randomly downloaded Clubhouse a couple of days ago just to see what it was all about. So this is my first time literally using the app. But um, yeah, I uh, I got introduced to uh, your friend Antonio Elon, who had some good advice for me and then introduced me to you. You had some great advice. And then I figured, you know, I heard about this Clubhouse and uh, this has got to be part of the simulation. So I just uh, thought, why not? So here I am. So I'm a, I'm actually um, I'm actually an adherent to the simulation hypothesis. All right. Well, spill the beans, man. What happened last week? Why do you uh, stop people? Why can people buy uh, GameStop shares? The people demand an answer, and they want to know the details and the truth. Yep. Yep. Um, okay. So let me let me start by giving a little bit of background. Um, so I'm the chief executive of Robinhood. Robin yeah, is actually a <laughs> Just go I'll, on, I'll go through this quickly. <laughs> Don't worry. This is this is uh, this is important. Um, it's actually uh, a couple of companies. So there's a an introducing broker dealer uh, called Robinhood Financial, and that basically is the app that you uh, know and love. It processes trades. Uh, you're a customer of of Robinhood Financial. Then there's a clearing broker dealer, um, Robinhood Securities, that clears and settles the trades. And then we have Robinhood Crypto, um, which is our crypto business, um, all of which uh, all of these are kind of different entities that are differently operated. So basically, Wednesday of last week, uh, we just had, you know, unprecedented volume, unprecedented load on the system. Uh, a lot of these, you know, so-called meme stocks were, um, you know, going viral on social media and people were um people were joining robin hood and there was a lot of net buy activity on them um as you guys all know and robin hood at this time i think was number one on the ios app store um and uh pretty close if not number one on on google play as well so just unprecedented yeah. activity um and so thursday morning right um so i'm i'm sleeping uh, but at 3.30 a.m. Pacific, um, our operations team receives a file from the NSCC, which is the National Securities Clearing Corporation. So basically, as a broker, as a clearing broker, um, and this is where Robinhood Securities comes in, we have to put up money to the NSCC um, based on some factors, including um, things like the volatility of the um, of the trading activity concentration into certain securities um, and this is this is the equities business so it's based on stock trading and um, uh, not options trading or or anything else um, so they gave us a file with a deposit and the the request was around three billion dollars um, which is, you know, about an order of magnitude more than what it typically is, right? So, um, no, 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 why, why and, was that so high? Like, this seems like, like, it, it sounds like this is an unprecedented increase in uh, demand for capital. Um, what formula did they use to calculate that? 
well, um, yeah, and just to give context, you know, Robinhood up until that point has raised, uh, you know, a little bit around $2 billion in total uh, venture capital up until now. So it's a big number, like $3 billion is, um, is a large number, right? So um, basically the, and, you know, I, the details are, we don't have the full details. It's a little bit of an opaque formula, but there's a component called the VAR of it, which is value at risk. And um, that's based on kind of some fairly quantitative things, although it's not, it's not fully transparent. So uh, there are ways to reverse engineer it, but uh, it's not kind of publicly shared. Um, and then there's a special component which is discretionary. Um, so that's that kind of acts as a multiplier. And um, basically it's discretionary, discretionary meaning like it's just their opinion. Yeah, uh, it's it's a little bit. I mean, I'm sure there's there's definitely more more than just their opinion. But um, basically, well, I mean, I, I guess like it's whatever, based on what, growth. what everyone wants to know, what everyone wants to know is like, did something maybe shady go down here? Like, like it, it's like it seems weird that you'd get a sudden ten billion dollar demand you know, three, three, billion, three, three in the morning. Billion. Sorry, how much? Yeah, it was three billion US dollars. Three billion. Okay, so three billion yeah, around, you know, just suddenly out of nowhere. Um, and what percentage I wouldn't, of that I wouldn't impute, I wouldn't impute shadiness to it or anything like okay. that. And actually, you know, the NSCC was reasonable subsequent to this. And, you know, they've been they've been uh, they worked with us to um, to actually lower it. So um, it was unprecedented activity. You know, we don't, I don't have the full context about, um, you know, what was, what was going on in, what's going on in the, in the NSCC to make these calculations. But um, yeah, essentially it is was anyone, a large Is anyone number. holding you hostage right now? Uh, <laughs> no, no, Blake I'm twice. okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, thanks for asking. <laughs> but anyway, so will there be any limits? Well, I think there's always going to be some theoretical limit. Like we don't have infinite capital, right? <laughs> and on Friday there were limits. Um, so there's always there's always going to have to be some limit. I think the question is, you know, will the limits be high enough to the point where, you know, some they they won't impact, you know, 99.9 plus percent of customers. Um, so. You know, if someone were to deposit a hundred billion dollars and and decide to trade in one stock like that, that wouldn't be possible. You know. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess people really just want to know. You know, if you had no choice, then then you had no choice. Uh, it's gun to the head situation, um, and you know, then that's understandable. Uh, but then whoever put that gun to your head should, you know, be willing to answer to the public. Yeah, listen, and, uh, you know, I know there's there's processes. This is unprecedented times. And to be fair to those guys, those guys. They've, been, they've been reasonable. So um, we are, I think the, the one thing that is maybe not clear to people is Robin is a participant in the financial system. Um, so we have to work with all of these counterparties. So we do get a lot of questions about, you know, why do you work with market makers? Why do you work with clearing houses? Uh, vertically integrating and getting, um, I mean, it's hard enough to, to build a introducing and a clearing broker dealer. Not too many people have done that. But the financial system that uh, allows customers to trade shares um, is sort of a complex web of multiple parties. And, um, you know, it's, it's hard to, I think everyone says oh, it could be better, it could be improved. Um, it's it's just the necessity of, of trading equities in the U.S. that you have to do all these things. I mean, to what degree are you beholden to Citadel? I mean, like, like basically, if Citadel's unhappy, then I, I, what, then what happens? Yeah, so that you know, there was a rumor that um, Citadel uh, or other market makers kind of pressured us into doing this, and now that, that's just false, right? Um, market makers execute our trades. They execute trades of, of every broker dealer. Um, 
you know, this was this was a clearinghouse. Um, this was a clearinghouse decision, and it was just based on the capital requirements. So, um, from our perspective, you know, Citadel and other market makers um, weren't involved in that. But wouldn't they have a strong say in in who got put in charge of that organization, since it's an industry consortium, not a government consortium, or not a government regulatory agency? Um, I, I don't have any reason to believe that. I think that's just like, you know, then you're getting into kind of the conspiracy theories a little bit. So I just have no no reason to believe that that's the case, you know? Okay. <laughs>